Uh, yeah, uh, a cover crop can continue the mycorrhizae uh, from, from one crop to the next if it's um, the right kind of cover crop, if it's done, um, because as long as it's a, a root dormant type crop and doesn't die in the, in the cold winter months, um, as long as those roots are alive, they can be dormant. Um, so that's it's one way. Now, it's not necessarily uh, cost effective to grow a cover crop just to um, continue your mycorrhizae. It's much cheaper to just buy an inoculum. But if you're cover cropping anyway, and you can keep that going and get it in in a, a short timeline after you've harvested your crop, um, plant your cash crop shortly after tilling in your cover crop, you can keep the mycorrhizal uh, cycle going without using an artificial, or I shouldn't say artificial, but a commercial inoculant. It can be done. Well, it's very simple to use um, an inoculant and, and because you're um, with no-till farmer, I'm going to kind of cite corn, so, you know, grain crops, commodity crops, rather than other crops that I work with sometimes. Uh, but the best situation is to apply it to the seed. You use the least amount of inoculant for the most benefit. Um, there, it can be watered in, it can be put in furrow. Probably the second best is to put it in furrow. Um, however, uh, the, the seed is the best. What initiates the, the spore to begin colonizing the root is actual um, physical or extremely close proximity, physical contact or close proximity to the root. So root exudates, break the dormancy, nothing else does it. So by putting it on the seed, only a very small amount of propagules, they're right, as soon as that seed germinates and there's a sprout, it activates the spores. So if you're in furrow or doing a broadcast, you have to wait for the roots to find the spores. Um, and that's sort of random. Maybe they don't happen to bump into them. And so you, it requires a lot more spores to get, get the results. So seed treatment is the way to go if possible.